Brothers and sisters, I salam alaikum. It is Saturday, and oh my goodness, what a program that we have for you. This is your brother, DJ Rockwell, the nation's number one DJ and your host of this program, this podcast, the Rockwell Radio Show. What's good, y'all? Happy Savior's Day. I'm so excited. Big Dave, I'm so excited. Not only do we have an incredible guest for tonight's show, I'm still excited, Big Dave, after celebrating the 100th anniversary, excuse me, the 100th episode of the Rockwell Radio Show. Big Dave, come on real quick and say hi to the people real quick. I say a quick word. So, bro, are you ready for this thing? Man, yes, yes. I'm ready to hear what our brother has to say, has to teach, and, uh, and, and to do it the way that only he can do it on the Rockwell Radio Show. Brother, let's, let's press, get play. into it. Let's get into that. He be David. Let's rock and roll, my brother. No doubt. Peace. Let's, let's get into this. And, and I want to stay to my schedule here because there's so much that can be said in the way of introduct, introducing this evening's guest. First of all, before we even get into that, we want everyone, as usual, to go ahead and observe the three standing rules of the Rockwell Radio Show. That means hit the like and share button, tag somebody, let them know what's going on, and of course, subscribe to the Rockwell Radio Show if you're watching us on YouTube. And not only hit the subscription button, we're asking everyone, go ahead and hit the notification button as well so you know that we're on, we're on, we're on. Big day. I'm excited, man. First of all, I want to tell everybody what the Rockwell Radio Show is all about. Not only have we crossed the landmine, the landline of, of uh, our 100th episode, we've been doing this for three years now. And the show has been growing and growing and growing. But if you're new here, welcome. What the Rockwell Radio Show is all about is my big brother, uh, our little brother, I should say, uh, Big Dave and I. We've been in the nation since the mid-90s. We came in and we thought that we had to leave hip-hop outside the door. We heard a word that changed our lives. And coming from the hip-hop background, we thought that we had to leave DJing, b-boying, MCing, and all of that, and graffiti writing at the door. But as I got into the lesson, as I got into the teachings, I quickly learned Thankfully, that no, don't leave that out. Bring that in and use it as a tool to help go and get our people. And thus, the Rockwell Radio Show was born out of that particular combination. So, yes, you see your brother in class A. Yes, you see me with the tie, but please don't get it twisted. This is about hip hop and saving our people. Listen to this. As we came across tonight's episode, we really didn't know what to call it. The brother that we're going to talk to tonight is so well versed in so many subjects. What do you call this other than a simple one on one conversation with a brother that's going to take us to higher levels in our thinking, higher levels in our understanding on topics of religion, history, sociology, anthropology? He's covered it all and more. But listen to this. 
Many, many people know Dr. Wesley as an author, the scholar, a student minister, a lecturer over the years, but I've had the opportunity to get to know this brother on time and again and again, seeing him throughout our journey in the nation of Islam. And I've had the pleasure of bumping into him in spots like these here. I had the opportunity to see brother in Atlanta. Dave, you can run that anytime now, my brother. Um, and this, this shot was in Detroit. At Savings Day, the brother was gracious enough to stop and take a photo. On another occasion, here in Atlanta, the brother gracious and beautiful enough to stop and chat. But the one that moved me the most, 10 years ago, Sadiq, I took him to hear Brother Wesley speak. And he said, Dad, Dad, I want to meet Dr. Wesley and take a photo with him. And as the FOI was trying to hurry Dr. Wesley out of the building, as the security team should, he saw Sadiq and he paused for that photo. So this hand clap, this applause is for Brother Wesley always being a brother. Because as people all often say, people don't care how much you know until they know how much you care. So Dave, let's get into this. As I begin to introduce my brother with some quick facts, Dave, I want to quickly change the beat. The brother accepted his own in 1990 by way of the 5% nation and came into the mighty FOI in the year of 1992. Our brother is a student minister, as mentioned earlier, a lecturer, an author, inventor of the term Black God Protocol. Yeah. He is a member of the Shura Executive Council, the governing body of the Nation of Islam. He is also a member of the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan's research group. He has appeared on shows like The Breakfast Club. He has appeared on Vlad TV. He's been featured in Tariq Nasheed's 2021 documentary, Hidden Colors, but breaking. Go see it if you haven't seen it. And lastly, the question is asked, why do they call him the doc? Nobody can answer that question better than the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan. up, Dr. Wesley. Now, the nation of Islam is producing scholars. Why don't you come out front? Here's a brother that got his Ph.D. degree from the University of Michigan at Ann Arbor. His doctoral dissertation was on point number 12 of what the Muslims believe that Allah came in the person of Master W. Far Muhammad, the Mahdi of the Muslims, the Messiah of the Christians, the long-awaited one. When you write a dissertation, you have to defend what you wrote in front of a body of scholars and you gotta prove your point. <laughs> did you get your doctorate degree, sir? Yes, sir, I did. Ladies and gentlemen, with no further delay, please welcome to the Rockwell Radio Show for the first time, my brother and yours, Brother Dr. Wesley Muhammad. Salam alaikum. Alaikum salam, big brother. What an honor to have you. The honor is all mine, brother DJ Rockwell. This is a powerful platform you have. And congratulations on your 100th 
episode. A lot. That's a man. mighty Bro. accomplishment. Brother, first let me begin with Happy Savior's Day. Happy Savior's Day. As I tend to do with all of my esteemed guests, dear brother, I afford them the opportunity to make any opening comment or any addition to the introduction that I may have missed. The floor for that purpose is yours. No, no, I, I don't. <laughs> Thank you. I have nothing to add um, except that nuance the Shura Executive Council is a governing body of the Nation of Islam under the direction and guidance the Honorable Brother Mr. Farrakhan. We yes, are sir. not self dependent Make that fact clear. Absolutely. And thank you. Then having said that, dear brother, I would love to jump right into these questions I have to get started. I want to begin, yes, Brother Dr. Wesley, with the quote that has now become synonymous with your name, Black God Protocol. Let's start there. We've all heard you use this phrasing uh, from time to time. I first heard you use it and explain it in the interview that you and Sister Starla did with Buster Rhymes. You said in that interview that Buster exercised Black God protocol upon meeting the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan for the first time. Can you please expound on that and explain for my viewers what does Black God protocol mean and the origin of that phrase? You know, when we see the Honorable Brother Minister Farrakhan, Whenever he would meet somebody, you see, for example, when he encountered Young Thug, I believe it was there in Atlanta, and the minister bowed to Young Thug, and Young Thug was taken aback by that, and the minister consistently, when he meets persons, he will bow to them and the minister explain that he's bowing to the God in each person because as great as the honorable brother minister Farrakhan is, and he's the third greatest man walking the planet Come on. right now. Yet, he says that in every individual, there is something and them that's greater than him, who bows to the greater God in each individual. That is Black God protocol. Come on now. Why are able to recognize there's a divine hierarchy? Niggas and devils are Ooh. consumed by ego and have to in one-upmanship and have to be at the head of every single table. But black, but God doesn't do that. Yes, God sir. knows better. God, the gods know how to fall into our place in the divine hierarchy. And I mm. close with this because again, the Honorable Brother Minister Farrakhan, I did not, that phraseology, though I've been studying a black God for 30 years now. Yes, sir. But that phraseology, that concept did not crystallize for me until after I was blessed to be brought here to Chicago and sit at the foot of the Honorable Brother Minister Farrakhan and then witnessing him, I witnessed all of the Black God protocol that I've been reading about in books. I witnessed it walk off the page. And so the Honorable Brother Minister Farrakhan, when he would have us in his presence and anyone who has been blessed to dine with the minister or meet with the minister in the group setting. He's always the most powerful one in the room. 
Come on, come on. Yet how he handles everybody, he empowers everybody. He recognizes the Godhood of everybody in the room. And even though he is the greatest God in that room, he yet deals with black God protocol and dealing with the black gods that he's among. So black God protocol is how gods, black gods mm. righteously mm. interact with each other, with the hierarchy and with the world. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Wow. Wow. Ladies and gentlemen, there you have it. There you have it. Brother Dr. Wesley, on this show, we have had the pleasure of sitting and talking with entertainers, authors, student ministers, doctors, and so on. But you are the first actual scholar that we've had the honor to speak to here on the Rockwell Radio Show. We hear the term thrown around a lot. Um, scholar this, scholar that. Kind of like in hip hop, we throw around the term the goat. Um, so I, I would hope to ask this question. What actually is a scholar, Dr. Wesley? And how does one earn the right to be called scholar? And why did you choose this particular lane to help serve and help the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan? Thank you, sir, for that question or two questions that I hear that I will, inshallah, answer. You are correct in your observation. The term scholar is bandied about somewhat recklessly. And I have to be careful. I have certain feelings about it and I have to be careful how I express regarding it because I'm trained as a scholar. Let let me let me go into that with this. I came into Islam as a five percent. Yes, sir. Five percent nation. When I came in, it, it's different to when I came in. There was protocol, there, there was rules. And one of the rules was the universal flag of the 5% nation. You could not wear it until you have mastered your 120. You have mastered the lesson. And how do you prove that you have mastered the lesson? A group of guys will get you in a cipher. And if you have on a pen, they will challenge you to prove your requisite, your ability to wear that pen. Yes, sir. So they will get you in a cipher and they will drill you. They will take you from a, a to Z, a lot to zigzag, zig, take you through all of the lessons and if you miss a punctuation if you miss a word if a word is out of place if anything you don't know or you get wrong in your lessons they will physically take your flag wow you couldn't just wear when i came up you couldn't just put on the flag you couldn't just call yourself a 120 god and wear that flag so that's how I'm trained in Islam. That's how I'm trained academically. Scholarship is verifiable. Scholarship is not an abstract thing in the academy, which is my native setting. Scholarship, if you're a scholar, you have a body of work. You have a body of scholarship. And scholarship is material that you put before your peer community of scholars, allowing what you claim to be vetted by your scholarly peers and 
peak if yes, they're sir. lacking just like five percent if you can't manifest your lessons your flag is taken come on if you put out as a scholar as an academic if you put out a claim a scholarly claim and it doesn't pass muster yes sir with the community of scholars who apply the scholarly method to what you claim then your scholarship your scholarly credibility hmm. so a body of scholarly work scholarly work is required to identify you as a scholar a youtube video doesn't qualify as a body of work say that so i do take that personally but i have to close on this point scholarship is scholarship and i am a scholar i i have my c i have the cv to certify my scholarship yes sir i always make the point and we should never be confused in terms of the hierarchy of knowledge for example to call the Honorable Brother Minister Farrakhan a scholar is to cheapen the mm. Honorable Brother Minister Farrakhan. Yes, sir. Yes. In the hierarchy of knowledge, we have to understand there's revelation way up here and there's scholarship. And the difference between revelation and scholarship, there's a gulf that can never be bridged between revelation and scholarship why revelation is pure truth from god come on the honorable brother minister farrakhan is the voice of god what he speaks is revelation scholarship is a very human endeavor. Yes, sir. In all scholarship, all scholarship from every scholar on that scholar's best day, all of it has an inherent margin of human error. Mm. Scholarship has the best of it has an inherent margin of human error that's why scholarship builds on scholarship and scholars of one generation has to correct scholarship of previous generations revelation has no margin of human error wow the honorable brother minister farrakhan is feeding the people it's revelation from God, this is why we don't take from it. We don't add to it. Revelation is not to be tweaked. Scholarship is tweaked every day, every year, every generation. Major answer, wow. Ladies and gentlemen, we're in the house of Dr. Wesley Muhammad, brother Dr. Wesley Muhammad. We wanna encourage everyone to go ahead and observe the three steps of the Rockwell Radio Show. Hit the like and share button, tag somebody. And if you are watching on YouTube, subscribe today and be sure to hit the notification button. So when we're live, you're live with us. Our guest is Dr. Brother Dr. Wesley Muhammad. And let me say, brother wanted me to make sure I always address him as brother doctor. You know, and I appreciate that he made that correction because as the most honorable Elijah Muhammad teaches us, the best title is brother. Absolutely. Well, the doctor, let's move on. I once read that the best teachers, the best teachers are the ones that can take complex subjects and make them easy to understand. In the age of TikTok and YouTube shorts, 
content, of course, is being shortened to help fit the attention span of this generation. So the research that you deliver, Brother Dr. Wesley, it seems does not fit for- It ain't the- TikTok friendly, is it? <laughs> <laughs> you might know where I'm going with this. <laughs> but even though they can benefit, obviously, from what you bring to the table. So let me ask, can good scholarship, Brother Dr. Wesley, be simplified? And if you do, does it hurt or, or lessen its integrity? Well, me personally, I'm a work in progress in that regard. The success or lack thereof, the those who avail themselves to my work will be the judge. You are spot on, Brother DJ Rock, where with your observation, I know for a fact that I break every social media <laughs> use rule. Right, right. I, do. I used to post on Instagram 10 page reports, <laughs> a JPEG. I violate all of the rules for success on social media. I'm a flagrant violator. I know that. A flag on the play. <laughs> Always. <laughs> And so in a in the TikTok world, I'm writing 800 page books and 500 page books. And I am committed to the integrity of the process of my work. Yes, sir. Some of it will translate well or at least acceptably in the current technological landscape some of it not so but i refuse in terms of my work i refuse to bring it up to speed those who have an attention span those who are impatient in the learning process Brother Dr. Wesley Muhammad is not the one you call. (laughs) You're not going to get a two second sound bite from me. So I'm just not the one and I'm comfortable in my skin. I don't desire to be invited on everybody's platform because I'm not good for everybody's platform. So yes, I, I am a square peg trying to fit into a social media circular landscape and it's not easy and you know every i'm not the flavor my work isn't the flavor of everybody and i'm happy with that you ain't you may not be my flavor how about that (laughs) so (laughs) yes i do violate i i don't use uh, um social media trying to do scholarship on social media in a TikTok era. You know, folks will say I'm not, you know, I- I'm not working for a social media success, but in fact, mm. I'm not working for social media success. Social media is just a tool used, I use to disseminate my work. One tool I use to disseminate my work. My work is not social media driven. Understood. So the social media in your case serves as the bait to get them out into the boat and then you can feed them the food. Well, I wouldn't even say that I would like to, but I'm I'm not savvy enough to use social media in that way. If I were, I would be more successful. I have more followers and all that, but I, I gave up on that rat race a long time ago. I'm glad to hear you say that. Actually, I'm glad that you say that. Yeah. If, because so I use that. social media as a vehicle of dissemination. Yes, sir. That that's it. I could, if I was skilled enough, I would do my social media game in a way that's more baiting, right? And I give them. 
I just don't. <laughs> I just ain't got that skill set. And I got the I don't have the time to learn it. So I just drop my stuff in wherever it lands with whom it lands or with whom it resonates. It does. I, I, I'm not a social media, a skilled social media person. So I leave that to those who are. I just use it as a, a platform to disseminate what it is. I believe Allah has given me. I understand. But brother doctor, we can, we can, we can conclude this for a certainty. It's obvious you're having an impact because people are defining their way to your work because everybody don't get a seat on the breakfast club. <laughs> so, so Praise people are obviously Allah. finding your work. Let's move on quickly as we approach the halfway mark of the show. I'm certain you're aware, Brother Dr. Wesley, of the famous quote by German philosopher, author Schopenhauer, who writes, all truth passes through three stages. First, it is ridiculed. Second, it is violently opposed. And third, Brother Dr. Wesley, it is accepted as self-evident. And what I would like to do is take that quote and apply it to your book, The Pot Plot. Marijuana, hip hop, and the scientific assault on Black America, aka the 800 pound gorilla. What I, would, what I would like you to do, Brother Dr. Wesley, is talk about the pushback you received upon the release of that book and talking about Black folks and their favorite pastime <laughs> and why did you call it? the 800 pound gorilla in the room. Thank you for that. And this, that three stage, those three stages of the reception of truth, this project absolutely went through all three stages. I did not anticipate the reaction when I said from our headquarters, our flagship mosque here in Chicago, Mosque Marianne, in 2017, the marijuana has been weaponized and it subtly feminizes black men. Yes, sir. That night, the social media blogs for example, Basip put it out. Nation of Islam minister Wesley Muhammad says weed makes black men gay. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I ain't, not only did I not say that, I never considered that possibility until I read those words. Of course, when I said weed, Feminize, subtly feminizes is what I said then. Yes, sir. I went on to explain what I meant. It induces hyper emotionality in males. I never, so I was talking about non-sexual feminizing. But for people who only can think of sexual feminization, i.e. Right. homosexuality. That's the only feminization they can countenance. Yes, sir. Our words were translated as we make black men gay. And boy, that opened a Pandora's box. How about it? In terms of the, not just local, but global reaction. And as I was trying to push back on that misrepresentation of what I said and what I'm saying and actually share the details of the pot plot, which is real. Come on. The U.S. governments, the U.S. armies, weaponization of marijuana, and in particular, marijuana components, THC, yes, weaponization sir. of it to subdue an enemy population, in this case, 
black men in America. That's real. But I could not successfully make that case through the noise mm. that was produced reacting to what I never said. How about it? We makes you gay. So the reaction was so emotional and nothing less than a 800 pound, a 800 page book with 2000 footnotes. Right. Would meet the challenge, overcome yes. the will to disbelieve because there's, there's a will to disbelieve mm. that we had any negative effects on people. There's a will to disbelieve that. And the will was so strong, so ironclad. If I was going to break through that will, break through the noise. Right. If for no other reason but to clear my name so y'all would stop saying, that nigga Wesley bugger, he crazy. <laughs> he can rock this, this crazy weed makes you gay. <laughs> and so I become a meme. That caricatures me, and I have too much self-respect to allow myself to be memed like that, right. to be caricatured like that. And so I made sure I overcame with receipts the will to disbelieve. So now I, I call this the 800-pound gorilla in the room. See, the, that gorilla in the room is the conversation. You want to have it absent that gorilla, but that gorilla's presence is so imposing. It's so imposing, you can't talk about what you want to talk about without considering. Come on. That 800 pound gorilla that's sitting in that room. So now the conversation. Yes, sir. Marijuana in 2024. Even if you still don't want to accept it. The conversation can't be had without the thought going to the pot plot. Because it's sitting right Dr. there. Wesley Muhammad has outlined in 800 pages and 2,000 footnotes. And just another point, the yes, subtitle, the book is not just about marijuana. The This book is volume two of understanding the assault on the black man, black manhood, and black masculinity. This focuses on the scientific assault and it's the pot plot, marijuana, hip hop, and the scientific assault on black America. Because as I showed the weaponization of hip hop and the weaponization of marijuana, are two sides of the same coin. Yes, sir. Brother, wow. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters, Dr. Wesley is in the building. Brother Dr. Wesley is in the building with us on the Rockwell Radio Show. I tell you what, that book, although I had, had a chance to get through every page, <laughs> Oh, I would love oh, to know it's, it's, it's a there. slow consumption. <laughs> piece, uh, piece by piece. Like eating an elephant. Piece <laughs> by piece. <laughs> but, but or a gorilla. 800 pound gorilla. Exactly. <laughs> I, I would love to be a fly on the wall to, to hear <laughs> some of the, 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 the knee jerk emotional reaction <laughs> that people thought when they misinterpreted your point. Yeah. Because from and what I've studied and heard, sir, I never said nor would I ever say or suggest that smoking a blunt will make a grown man sexually attracted to another man. That's ridiculousness, brothers. I did y'all hear it? 
You heard Brother Dr. Wesley clear the air. He said it then and he's saying it again now on the Rock Hall Radio Show. Let's get one more question in before the break. In many of your writings, Brother Dr. Wesley, and we're going to get, get into some hip hop real quick. In many of your writings, you uncover how hip hop has been weaponized by our enemy. Upon lecture upon lecture, uh, you have discussed this very important topic. But right now, I want, I want to give a shout out to somebody who's countering the narrative. But when our sister Neelam dropped her hip hop classic, Got Em Like, it yeah. was absolutely a game changer. And we're going to shout her out yeah. and give her a quick hand real fast. Sister Neelam out. out on the West Coast. Sister Neelam, Brother Donique, all of them. And Golden Child. Call them out. Absolutely. That was, that, 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 that was a dope um collective and produce the dope product and that's what i want to ask you about in fact what i want to ask specifically about is your reaction to it not only did you share their video on your youtube page you made the following comment you said this you said i have often described hip-hop as a beautiful black stallion and whoever is saddled atop it can help determine the fate of black America. That stallion can ride black people towards redemption or it can ride us toward destruction if Satan has its reins. Currently, you continue, most of rap music is controlled by our enemies and they are steering this horse toward our doom. This video is a dope illustration of what it looks like when the gods take the reins and steer the stallion. Dr. Wesley said that about Sister Neelan and her video along with Golden Child and Brother Donnie. Here's the question, Dr. Brother Dr. Wesley, and it's also a two-part question as we close out the first half of this interview. Why did you choose to compare hip hop to a black stallion? Was that coincidental? And number two, how does controlling the reins of said stallion equate to redemption for our people? Yeah, yeah, thank you. The, the black stallion is a beautiful animal. It's a powerful animal. And I heard the honorable brother Minister Farrakhan talk about the stallion. And it's not control the black stock. It's not easy to tame a black stock. It's it has such an independent spirit, God given independent spirit. Hip hop strikes me like that. It's so beautiful. It's so powerful. It's so black. And what it can do, DJ Rockwell, on such, on so many levels, when the Honorable Brother Minister Farrakhan says the science of music is at the root of the true religion of God. Wow. Hip hop expresses that in a very powerful way. Yes, sir. Hip hop on a scientific level can move the individual and the herd the group. Mm. In fact, our enemies have mastered using music, using hip hop in particular. To scientifically move the herd, create the culture. Scientific. And modify the individual. I have 
Brother DJ Rockwell. Two very important documents. Yes, sir. Yeah, talking about why did I say hip hop as a beautiful black stallion can lead to doom or to destruction? The wicked witch of the West, Hillary Clinton. Come on. The wicked woman as the Honorable Brother Minister Farrakhan has stated. But she said something when she was Secretary of State. In 2010, she said something extremely important. She described hip hop as a tool at the US government's disposal. Wow. wow. She literally said of hip hop that it is a chess piece in a multi-dimensional chess game. Hip hop, wow. a chess piece that the US government moves in a multi-dimensional chess game. Mm. I have here a CIA document released in 1983, and it can be accessed by all on the CIA's reading room where they dump declassified CIA documents. This document concerns a CIA project called Project Gateway. Now, Brother DJ Rockwell, if all who have watched my documentary on rap gods or have heard me speak on the weaponization of hip hop. And I do want to touch on why I insist on the language of weaponization of hip hop. Yes, sir. Rather than the weaponization of rap, as some good folk would want me to, I'll touch on that in, in a minute. But if you heard me, you speak on this subject, you've heard me discuss neural beats, right? Low frequency trap music, the scientific significance of trap music with its 808 beats, and I'm a trap music fan. That's my preferred. <laughs> I've heard you say that. It is. <laughs> oh, I'm guilty, I'm sorry. <laughs> But it doesn't deny the reality of what it is. You heard me discuss low frequency sound and 808 beats and how through binaural beats, these phantom frequencies are created in the mind of the listener through headphones. The popularity of these big old beats by Dre. Right. When he he wanted to produce shoes, but a clever devil approached him and said, not shoes, headphones. Mm. So now we got the headphone culture that didn't come out the blue. Where did it come from? Because headphones facilitates the creation of phantom frequencies in our mind through binaural beats and through these phantom frequencies mind and behavior can be modified. Now, this CIA document that has a CIA detailing its use, its weaponization of binaural beats in the gateway process, it shows they mastered using frequency through music, mm. using music and hidden frequencies through headphones, these binaural, binaural beats, this document shows the CIA use of this to control a population's mind and engineer a population's behavior and activity. Wow. The reality of black life in America with 
hip hop being so dominant and influencer in a black life. There is no more dominant. There is no religion. There's more influential on black thought and black life. No politics. There's nothing that shapes black thought and black life as profoundly as does hip hop and the state of black america today is a testament to who's riding this black stallion Actually, our that's communities that. where you hear music our music beating down the streets but as we drive through our communities our communities are ecologies of fear mm. ecologies of a fear because all of the music that's beaten down the street produce low frequencies and stimulate all of these low hertz brain waves in the population and so we stay on fear we stay on stress and so we're easily triggered and so we're impulsive and we're always fighting our music is a direct contributor to that state of affairs and it is because satan has commandeered and took the reins of this beautiful black stallion wow wow big dave did you catch that phrase the ecology of Fear. That's the, that's the album, y'all. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters, we have Brother Dr. Wesley in the house. We are 20 minutes past our first segment, but one thing I was not going to do is stop Brother Dr. Wesley from teaching. <laughs> so we're going to take a break right at this point, and when we come back, we're going to talk hip hop in academia. When we come back, we're going to talk J Electronica. And when we close, we're going to talk about this great brand new book from our brother, chariots of the black gods don't go away we'll be right back what up with it man you already know what time it is it's me young kind of dog i'm up in this thing this is Azim Zakir Kareem, the left giving them seed. Peace, everyone. This is Brother Anthony K. Muhammad, also known as A Tone, a hip hop historian. Peace, family. What's going on? It's Brother Debril, Brother Mustafa, Lord C. Productions in the building. I am your sister, Arian Nicole. Peace, peace, peace. It's your sister, Lush Two Acts, and you are watching the Rockwell Radio Show. You are now tuned in live to the Rockwell Radio Show. Right now, you're listening to Rockwell Radio Show. Rockwell Radio. If you ain't listening, man, you wasting time. You on all these other stations, you need to tap in. Rockwell Radio. You know what it is. Watch him, watch him, watch him. I'm here with Brother Rockwell, the Rockwell Radio Show. If you ain't in the game, you in the stand. Stop playing, man. Let's go. Assalamu alaikum. This is your brother, Nuri Muhammad. And whenever I'm searching for a source or a platform that I can get some news that I can use, I look forward to and look at, watch and listen to the Rockwell Radio Show. And I hope you will do the same. Get ready. Sunday, February 25th. Live from the Huntington Center in Detroit, Michigan, it's Savior's Day. As the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan speaks to the world. Why must there be a war to end all wars? His subject, what does Allah, the great Mahdi, and the great Messiah have to say about the war in the Middle East? Why must there be a war of Armageddon? because Satan has to be exposed. Streaming live at NOI.org. February 25th, it's the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan. 
they don't want you to hear what I'm about to say. That's NOI.org. Don't miss it. Brothers and sisters, welcome back. Welcome back. This is DJ Rockwell. You're tuned in to the Rockwell Radio Show. We need everybody to go ahead and observe the three standing rules of the Rockwell Radio Show. Go ahead and hit the like and share button. Tag somebody. Let them know you're in the building. Let them know they should be in the building. And last but not least, please subscribe to the Rockwell Radio Show today. Turn on the notifications so when we go up, you'll be right up there with us. Uh, subscribe, subscribe, and let them know that we're here. Um, we got our great, great, great brother, Dr. Wesley Muhammad, in the house with us. A round of applause for our brother once again, having a dynamic conversation. Man, didn't know what to call this conversation, but I'm glad that you're here with us. If you're having a good time with us, go ahead and put a number one in the chat and tag somebody. Let them know that you are the number one, rocking with the number one DJ in your area. Let's get back to it, brother Dr. Wesley. I wanted to get into... What I'm noticing now, which I am pretty proud of, I am very happy to see hip hop has found its way into the higher learning circles. Listen to this. Hip hop has found its way into academia and is now being taught as college courses all around the country. Beginning in 1991, I learned, Brother Doctor, at Howard University, and also in top ranked universities such as Harvard, Penn State, USC, UCLA, Stanford, Rice, Duke, and others. They all follow suit. Now, I also learned the fact that yourself and brother God MC, J Electronica, also taught a course at Oxford University yourselves. And I thought that was absolutely dope. So I also learned, brother Dr. Wesley, that this has not been without its criticism. Listen to this. In 2014, Jerry D. Rassius, who happens to be a writer for a website called Hoya.com, he wrote the following piece titled Hip Hop Unworthy of Academia. Listen to what he said. He writes, while it is clear many rappers have developed expansive vocabularies and complex rhyming schemes, the words themselves are far too explicit to be worthy of study. I could have stopped there, but he continues. The constant profanities are an obstacle in themselves, and the subjects they broach are not any easier to stomach. Misogynist ideas and sexist terms run rampantly through rap and hip-hop songs, he writes. Drug use, illegal violence, monetary gains, and material success are glorified. Racism is an overarching subject. Egotism is irrationally overt. Each one of these themes is harmful to society, either based on its action, such as illegal violence, or because of the repercussions of it, egotism propagates selfish people. He concludes by saying it is understandable that these topics are derived from situations in reality. And it is true that many of the rappers are regrettably well versed in these criteria. But what can students learn from such obscenities? It is commendable to study anyone's struggle from the bottom to the top of society. But the manner in which rappers convey their journey is not conducive to study. It, re it reinforces these values of being sexist, egotistic, and material driven to the audience. That's a lot of text to write. And I wanted to read it all to make sure that I just wasn't taking them out of context. The question is, I want you to respond to uh, this writer from Hoya.com. So... And I haven't read the whole article. The excerpt that you offer, I, I, I can comment on. I'm happy to comment on. It's a mixed bag for me. To say hip-hop, whatever its state, is not worthy of study is ridiculous. 
it defies the principle of the scientific method because scientifically no experiment is a failure even if the outcome is not what you intended you learn what does not work there is nothing in the white man approaches it like that he studies everything he puts everything he atomizes everything and puts each atom under a microscope that's scientific thinking the honorable elijah muhammad said the original man started that being the experimental we are an experimental people as god the thought that something is not worthy of study is ridiculous as much as anything else any other phenomenon should be studied it should be studied at the highest level now i don't disagree with the writer's assessment of the content and why i appreciate d1 right now and i confess before his recent controversy with rick ross and meek mill and them i i was not familiar with my brother but i got familiar and i listened to his commentary and it's important hip the hip-hop community gotta take responsibility and accountability and that's one of your themes dj rockwell for your show the content the negative content of hip-hop hip-hop because it ain't just on wax it's bodily behavior in the culture it's cultural expression this beyond it's so bad that rappers now have to on their videos announce this is all cat we knew it was cat all along but you were presenting it as real and influencing are young people to mimic your behavior and you reaping the rewards and but now because rico is on your tail now rappers are having to say this is all cap don't believe what you hear but too many generations have already suffered from the powerful hurting effect of the music so the writers lifting up for criticism the negative content of the music i have no problem with that we should be holding the culture more accountable than we seem to be willing there you go come on now come on I'm going to get out of hand right there because absolutely that is the theme of the Rockwell Radio Show. Accountability for what comes out of our community. My goodness. Out of respect, Brother Dr. Wesley, we are, I try to only keep my show at an hour. We are now three minutes past that. May I request just a few more moments of your time? Yes. Thank you, sir. <laughs> Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, I should have known I wasn't going to get an hour <laughs> with Brother Dr. Wesley Muhammad. But thank you for staying here with us as well as we keep going with these great questions as we talk to our brother, Dr. Wesley Muhammad. Let's get into this question. Now, speaking of Brother J. Electronica, you were there with our dear brother, the God MC, at the 2014 Brooklyn Hip Hop festival most people think that the highlight of that show was him receiving the necklace from jay-z no but for me brother dr wesley it was the fact that he performed his set 
in FOI uniform flanked by the mighty FOI. Now, get this. Fast forward 10 years later, and here we got Killer Mike winning album of the year with features of the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan and mentions of Master Fahd Muhammad on his album. So could this mean, Brother Dr. West, that we are witnessing a potential return of conscious hip hop being acceptable to the mainstream? I think so. Absolutely. One, understand that this speaks to the transgenerational. Be careful with the word. Yes. Not transgender. <laughs> yes, sir. Transgenerational power of the honorable brother Minister Farrakhan. He has had a presence, a pulsating presence in hip hop from the beginning and we actually document in here how the divorce between islam and hip hop was deliberately engineered because of the shadow that the nation of islam and in particular the honorable brother mr farrakhan the shadow he cast over early hip hop the powers that be forced a divorce between hip hop and Islam, certainly on the mainstream, but the minister has had a pulsating presence the whole time. And so here, decades later, totally new generation, the new crop of hip hop artists are name dropping the minister. The reason a Kanye West can drop Jesus Walks. Come on. And it be a club banger. Of course, we had Christian rap. We had conscious rap. We even had Muslim rap before that. But it was on the margins. It didn't, a lot, most of it didn't have the mainstream play or the production to be a club banger. Yes, sir. But when Ye dropped, Jesus walks. And it was a club banger. That really opened the door to mainstream hip hop flirtation with religion again. Because remember, this is the the age of religious cynicism. Don't nobody do religion, right? Don't right. nobody want to hear no religion talk. But he dropped that. Jesus walks. And then we hear him acknowledge Farrakhan as the sensei. So even though that was would be qualified as Christian rap, yes, sir. Christian rap, you see the influence, the continued influence, the pulsating influence of the Honorable Brother Minister Farrakhan that has never gone away in hip-hop, even if it was unnoticeable in the mainstream or unrecognized during certain periods, but the minister is so transgenerational because there's a real marriage between Farrakhan and hip-hop. Come on, right. There really is. a From the beginning, a real marriage between Islam and hip-hop in Farrakhan in, in hip hop. And so to, to come 30 years later and have all of the biggest names of hip hop name dropping him, going out of their way to name drop him in their music. Right. It does let the world know that you ain't going nowhere. Come on. In hip hop. Powerful. Abs you, that comment really just summarizes what the Rockwell Radio Show is all about. Our show exists primarily and explicitly for the purpose to absolutely showcase and prove the marriage of the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan and true hip hop. That's what this show That's is all fact. about. That's, That's a what fact. this show is all about. And that's why it's such a successful and powerful show.
Brother DJ Rockwell. Thank you. Brother Doctor, let's pivot into your written work, specifically your latest written work. I want to make sure that they can see that because that don't get the glare of my lighting here. This book here, Chariots of the Black Gods, the UFO Reality and the Alien Hoax. Now, this is the first time that my show has ever covered this subject, but I couldn't think of any better person than yourself to even broach this subject. And I know in the brief span of this show, it's insufficient to cover what this all is about. But I want to kind of just touch the surface, if you'll allow me. Like I said to you in, in, in the pre-show, I just got it a few days ago, and I was able to read through the first chapter. But I want to focus on the first chapter, if you'll allow me, which you titled America's Come to Jesus Moment. Powerful for me. Let me tell you why. Because to me, it encapsulates a double entendre. You have the figure of speech come to Jesus, which tends to mean to finally deal with something that is very obvious, coupled with the who you have to come to and where it is you got to come to. So here's the question. What is it, Brother Dr. Wesley, that has forced this come to Jesus moment on America and why write about it now? Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. It's very important. The timing, all of this new talk about you so-called UFOs, there have been multiple congressional hearings on Capitol Hill frontally dealing with so-called UFOs or now UAPs, Unidentified Anomalous Phenomenon is how they have retagged it. You have congressmen who publicly proclaim the reality of these craft now. Right when just 10 years ago, the very subject was mocked in the most respectable circles, including government circles in this country. Now, all of a sudden, the Washington Post will have the gall to print, UFOs are real, deal with it. We got to catch up with them as if they have been standing on this point all these years and it's us in the public that need to have a come to Jesus moment. When the Washington Post mocked the Honorable Brother Minister Farrakhan when he sat with their editors in 1990, I believe, or 92, and they mockingly brought up the ministers more than a vision experience, his encounter and transportation on into the wheel. In 1985, the Washington Post mocked it and continued to mock the subject for decades. But now the Washington Post is posturing as if they always, it was always self-evident to them and we the people need to catch up. All of this is triggered, I show, by an event. Something forced America to deal with the reality and the imminence of this reality forced America to deal with it in a particular, in a new way. In that event, all of the news coverage goes back to a December 2017 New York Times article. That's the foundation of all of the current UFO acknowledgement talk. Of course, New York Times have has 
always, but I put an asterisk on that, has always ridiculed the subject or stayed away from the subject of UFO. So when they dropped the article in December 2017, it took the world by storm that the New York Times will report in sober language that the Pentagon had been hunting, has a an official program to hunt UFOs for decades. Why did the New York Times publish their groundbreaking confession in December 2017? Because in October 2017, governments of the world came face to face with the reality of Jesus. The Reconnaissance, the National Reconnaissance Office, the secret spy satellite, call view of what we show the mothership having left the solar system, the satellites, the most sophisticated spy space satellites of the U.S. government owned and operated by the National Re Reconnaissance organization. They caught the mothership coming in to the solar system. The planetariums at in Hawaii and across the world, a little while, a couple weeks later, they caught it too. And all of them were able to get data. They called the mothership that they witnessed. Omua Mua. Hawaiian term that signaled messenger from the distant past reaching out. I show in the book that Omua Mua isn't an asteroid, isn't a comet that was the mothership that a lot of the government of the world with their secret apparatuses, for example, the National Reconnaissance Organization, state satellites, but also public instruments. The mothership displayed itself to the world. So 800 hours of data was collected because the mothership allowed itself to be photographed and measured for two weeks before it then disappeared. So a tremendous amount of data was collected. And after October 2017, the decision was made to initiate in December 2017 a public information management operation. See, this is about information warfare. The government has to control the narrative. The issue was if the secret satellites of the National Reconnaissance Organization were the only ones who were able to witness the mothership, they could keep that under wraps and continue with the normal project of debunking UFO. But because governments and instruments around the world were able to witness this show that I put on, it was public knowledge. They had to, the government had to initiate a new public information management operation. That's why the December 2017 New York Times article was dropped. And so what is the aim of this new campaign? Well, it's the new iteration. It's a new iteration, but on a larger scale of an old disinformation angle 
the angle is acknowledge the ships but link them with alien the cover up come on brother dj rockwell since roswell 1947 the cover up hasn't been there are no ufos that's the lower level cover up the real cover up has been there are aliens. That's the disinformation. The extraterrestrial hypothesis that is used to explain the UFO phenomenon, that is the real cover up. And this is what is coming out of the new public information management operation. And so you have Senator Rubio yes, and sir. other senators saying, well, publicly saying, well, these craft are violating sensitive military airspace. It's better that they are aliens from another planet rather than a terrestrial enemy. Mm. Well, Senator Rubio, they, your military airspace is not violated by aliens from another planet. They are violated by a terrestrial enemy in one sense, but non-terrestrial in another sense, because the power while the your enemy is based here on Earth, it has a power that transcends anything that the governments of Earth possess. But they are pushing the extraterrestrial narrative so that the public will never come to terms with the reality of the black gods, human gods that are operating these crap. They rather the public believe in bug eyed aliens than Asiatic blacks. Come on, wow. Wow. And ladies and gentlemen, I want to direct your attention to the bottom third of your screen for more information where you can get not only the book we're discussing now, many of his other writings can be found there at www.wesleymohammed.com. Your brother DJ Rockwell has got his copy. Please, you go and get yours. Ladies and gentlemen, Dr. Wesley Muhammad, brother Dr. Wesley Muhammad is with us. And like I said, we're now 22 minutes over time. And I thank you. And I got so many more notes and points and questions to go over. If time you permits. You to do a part two. <laughs> if, if, if you would, would have us, we would love to do a part two with you. But I do want to close with one more question and tie this all back to the man that you and I both love that we're going to Detroit to hear and see with the believers from all over the world at Savior's Day. Can you please conclude this interview by sharing with our audience? And, and just so you know, Brother Doctor, my audience is the hip hopper. My audience is the MC, the DJ, the graffiti writer. My audience is also the believer. Explain to them all, Brother Dr. Wesley, why they should make every effort possible to get to Save His Day 2024. Yeah, the whole world anxiously awaits February 25th. I'm not being hyperbolic. The New York Post lamented what they call the strains silence of the Honorable Brother Minister Farrakhan with the Middle East up in flames, in particular, our people in Gaza and Palestine, with war raging in Ukraine. The world wants to know what Farrakhan has to say about it. And they've been trying to get 
a comment from him either directly or through those of us who are blessed to represent him but none of us have anything to say because we have to get it first from the man of God but God has hailed his servant he's given him what to say but he's hailed it and so the world will be tuned in to hear not what Farrakhan think about what's going on the world will tune in February 25th to hear what God declares about what's going on Come on, in the Middle East and the world. God, understand, world, in the world, even if they don't admit it, they have come to terms with this reality. That's why they are lamenting Farrakhan's silence. The world knows that God declares today through the honorable Brother Minister Farah, this is a very perilous hour that we are in. And there is no time where the guidance, the understanding, the view of God is so desperately needed Come in on. the matter. Right. So what's going on in the world today? You have not heard it at all. None of the talking heads, all of the ink spilt and voices raised on this subject of the war in the Middle East, none of it has been God's see on the map. We will all hear that February 25th. Before our Savior's Day in Detroit. If you cannot make it to Detroit, but I would love, we would love to see you there. But even if you don't, I don't even have to invite you. I already know that you will be tuned in because you want to know what's going on with this very gut wrenching situation that we're all witnessing but we don't understand we will understand we will be given understanding february 25th that's right 2020. see you in detroit brother dj rocky ladies and gentlemen you've heard it directly from brother dr wesley muhammad brother thank you for being so gracious with your time and sharing your wisdom and sharing your experiences and giving us yet another i think i used i heard you once use the word tune to to, pl to plunder through and, and and gain what's going on around us go and get the book and all of his writings ladies and gentlemen uh at his website again listed at the bottom of your screen www.wesleymuhammad.com brother doctor we thank you and inshallah we the rock radio show will see you in detroit Brothers and sisters, that's it. That's another Thank episode you. of the Rockwell Radio Show. And uh, again, big day. Let me say this real quick. Everybody that's going to be in Detroit, we want to meet you. We want to be able to shake your hand and thank you for being a viewer, a subscriber, and a supporter of the Rockwell Radio Show. If you see your brother, stop your brother. I just want to shake your hand and take a photo with you and say thank you to your face because we don't take you for granted. This is it, y'all. We are out of here, and we will see y'all at Savior's Day 2024. Brother Doc, Asam Lakeham, y'all, we are like out of here. Now, if you got past all of that, you might as well keep on rocking with us. So come on.
episode, man. Come on, man. Top tripping.